in this video i will talk about inductive reactance after that i will show you a circuit simulation so that you get a better idea of the concept of inductive reactance what is inductive reactance inductive reactance is the total ohmic opposition offered by an inductor to the magnitude of the current in the circuit see inductive reactance is the total ohmic opposition offered by an inductor to the magnitude of the current flow in the circuit as our inductive reactance will offer opposition to the current flow that means our inductive reactance will reduce the magnitude of the current in the circuit usually we express the inductive reactance with xl and the unit of this xl will be ohm so i can say that inductive reactance is the ohmic opposition offered by an inductor to the magnitude of the current in the circuit now let me further clarify it if i have a simple resistor here in a metal the resistor r is caused due to the charged atom and molecular vibration due to temperature in that case the current i through the resistor let's say will be equal to voltage v across the resistor divided by the value of resistor the unit of this resistance will be ohm therefore if i increase the value of r that means in this circuit i am offering more opposition to the current or more resistance to the current as a result you will see there will be a decrease in the current as our inductive reactance will be an ohmic opposition due to the inductor therefore you will see as the value of xl will, will increase the total current in the circuit will decrease what is the cause of the opposition to the current flow in an inductor see inductive reactance is the resistance that presents inside an inductor due to the back emf developed in that the inductive reactance is the resistance that presents inside an inductor due to the back emf there will be a back emf induced in this inductor which will oppose the applied voltage because of that we will get inductive reactance now let me further clarify it consider this pure inductive circuit in this circuit i am applying an alternating voltage v equal to v m sin omega t the inductance of the inductor is l as i am applying sinusoidal voltage therefore let's say i am getting a alternating or sinusoidal current in the circuit let's say the equation of the current is given by i equal to i m sin omega t plus phi as this is an inductor therefore we will get some sort of phase shift in the current so i will be equal to i m sin omega t plus phi this phi indicates the phase shift as we are getting a time varying current therefore in this circuit our i will not be constant because of that di by dt will not be equal to zero as a result you will see when we will apply this voltage v in the circuit i will get a voltage induced in this inductor vl and the value of this vl will be given by l into d dt of i therefore this vl the voltage that is induced in the inductor which is termed as back emf this back emf vl will offer opposition to the main supply voltage that means main supply voltage will try to conduct the current in this direction and this back emf will try to conduct the current in this direction and because of the opposite current conduction you will see there will be a reduction in the current flow in the circuit this is why we get the inductive reactance due to the presence of an inductor in a circuit now let me derive the equation of the inductive reactance after that i will show the circuit simulation the voltage developed in this inductor or the back emf in the inductor v l equal to l ddt of i now if i take the derivative of i equal to i m sin omega t plus phi i will get omega i m cosine omega t plus phi 
at the last portion i will convert all the quantities into phasor form therefore i have to convert all the voltage and currents into sine wave therefore i will get omega l i m sine omega t plus phi plus 90 degree because cos theta equal to sine theta plus 90 degree here we have this omega t plus phi i will consider this as theta and this is our 90 degree so the voltage induced in the inductor will be vl equal to omega l i m sin omega t plus 90 degree now see if i apply kvl in the circuit here this voltage vl will oppose the applied voltage therefore i will get v minus vl equal to zero this applied voltage v equal to vm sine omega t and this vl is equal to omega l i m sine omega t plus phi plus 90 degree and if i take it in the right side i will get omega l i m sine omega t plus phi plus 90 degree okay now see if i convert this vm sine omega t into phasor form and this i m sine omega t plus phi plus 90 degree into phasor form i will get vm phase angle 0 degree equal to omega l i m phase angle will be phi plus 90 degree let's say this is our equation number one when we have a complex number z equal to x plus j y this is known as rectangular form when this complex number is given in this form r phi this is known as polar form and when this complex number is given in this form r exponential of j phi this is known as exponential form of the complex number we can transform this complex number from this form to this form or 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 from this form to this form okay now look at this portion of the equation number one i am phase angle phi plus 90 degree it is obvious that this is given in the polar form now see if i convert it into exponential form i will get i m exponential of j phase angle will be phi plus 90 degree now see if i expand this i will get i m phase angle exponential of j phi exponential of j 90 degree now see if I have exponential of j 90 degree I can expand this by using Euler's identity e to the power j theta equal to cos theta plus j sin theta so I can write it like this cosine 90 degree plus j sin 90 degree which will be equal to 0 and this will be 1 so I will get only j so let me put the value of e to the power j 90 degree I am into exponential of j phi into j so here I can write it like this j I am exponential of j phi see this portion of this equation is given in the exponential form I can convert it into polar form so I can write it like this j i m phase angle will be phi so I can write down i m phi plus 90 degree in the form of j i m phi now let's say this is our equation number two look at the equation number one 
I will replace this portion with this j i m phi. So there I will get v m phase angle will be 0 degree equal to j omega l i m phase angle will be phi. See this is the voltage phasor and this is the current phasor. So I can express this as voltage phasor capital V and this is as current phasor capital I. So this is our phasor voltage and this is our phasor current. So if I take the ratio of phasor voltage and phasor current, I will get the inductive reactance in phasor form which will be equal to J omega L and this V by I is equal to J omega L is our inductive reactance and in the phasor form XL equal to J omega L. If I take the magnitude of this XL it will be equal to omega L which is equal to twice phi F L. This is the inductive reactance. That means this XL will indicate the resistance presence in the inductor to the current flow. Okay. So here you will see if I keep this frequency constant I will get XL is directly proportional to the value of inductance or if I keep this inductance constant you will see XL will be directly proportional to the frequency. Therefore you will see a linear relationship between the XL to frequency or XL to inductance L. If I take XL in this direction and F or L in this direction you will see I will get a linear curve. That means our XL will increase linearly with the frequency or inductance. And we can define the inductive reactance as the ratio of phasor voltage and phasor current in a pure inductive circuit. The higher the value of this inductive reactance XL, the lower the current will flow in this circuit and the XL has a unit of Ohm. Now consider the case of a DC supply. In a DC supply voltage, you will see with respect to time t, our DC supply will maintain a constant voltage V with respect to time. That means in case of DC supply, F is equal to 0. So here you will see as F equal to 0, our inductive reactance XL will be equal to twice phi F into L equal to 0 ohm. That means for a pure DC voltage our inductor will not offer any resistance to current flow. Therefore for a DC supply voltage our inductor will act as a short circuit. Now I will show you a simulation so that you can understand the effect of change of frequency and effect of change of the value of inductance in a circuit. In this circuit I will have this L1 equal to 1 milli Henry and I am supplying this inductor with a voltage source of 120 volt RMS voltage and a frequency of 60 hertz. This 120 volt VRMS this indicates that we divide the maximum value of the voltage Vm with root 2 to get the VRMS. Okay, now see our inductance XL equal to twice phi FL. At first I will show you the effect of change of frequency. After that I will show you the effect of change of this inductor. Here I will keep this L1 fixed at 1 milli Henry. At first I will keep this F equal to 60 Hertz. In that case our inductive reactance XL1 equal to twice phi F will be 60 Hertz. 60 into 1 milli Henry 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 this will be equal to 0 0.3769 
O home. Now see as our XL1 equal to 0.3769 ohm therefore in this circuit our current IRMS1 will be equal to VRMS divided by XL1 VRMS is equal to 120 volt and XL1 is equal to 0 0.3769 ohm therefore I will get the value of RMS current will be equal to 318.31 ampere after that I will change the value of this frequency and I will set that to F equal to 60 kilohertz in that case our XL2 will be equal to twice phi FL2 F2 L1 here the frequency will be 60 kilohertz 60 into 10 to the power minus 3 and our inductance is 1 milli henry 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 sorry this is 10 to the power 3 okay so this 10 to the power minus 3 and this 10 to the power minus 3 will get cancelled therefore I will get XL2 equal to 376.99 ohm so our IRMS2 will be equal to 2 VRMS will be equal to 120 volt and XL2 will be equal to 376.99 ohm so this will be equal to 0 0.318 ampere okay now let me show you the simulation at first this frequency is equal to 60 hertz and inductance equal to 1 milli henry now look at the reading of the multimeter our current through the inductor will be equal to 318.31 ampere but now if now see if I increase the value of the frequency you will see it will be equal to this current will be equal to 314.31 203 milli ampere 0.318 ampere or if I approximate it I will get 318 milli ampere see it is approximately 314 milli ampere now see see here as I have increased the value of this frequency similarly it has increased the value of our inductive reactance see as a result we get a decrease in current here so in case of an inductive circuit if I increase the value of frequency it will increase the value of inductive reactance which will decrease the value of current in the circuit because inductive reactance provide opposition to current flow